Welcome to Melachim Bet, Perik Hafei, chapter 25, which is tragically the last chapter, both uh, in terms of the book, but also in terms of the Jews living in Judea. You have King Tzidkiyahu, now king of Israel, and uh, unfortunately he does not follow in the way of Hashem, and he also rebels against uh, the king of Babel. He violates his oath of loyalty to the, to the king of Babel, and uh, King Nebuchadnezzar does not tolerate anything like that. He comes to Jerusalem, he sets siege to the city, and Tidkiao decides he's going to escape. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been there, but uh, in Jerusalem there's something called uh, Tidkiao's Tunnel, I believe. Uh, and uh, basically Tidkiao runs away in the middle of the night from Jerusalem towards Jericho, but he gets caught by the uh, Babylonians, and I hate to say this, but they bring him to uh, the king of Babel. And the king of Babel, I hate to really say this, but the king of Babel kills uh, Tzidkiyahu's children in front of him, so it's the last thing he sees, and then he uh, pokes out Tzidkiyahu's eyes. Uh, and then once Tzidkiyahu is uh, really, you know, so decimated by the king of Babel and the leadership is gone, Basically, Jerusalem has fallen, and uh, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, goes back to Babel, and he sends n a horrible person named Nebuzradan, Nebuzradan, it's hard to pronounce sometimes, Sarah Tabachim, the master butcher. Can you imagine what it takes for someone to get that name, the master butcher, Rava Tabachim? Anyhow, yeah, that's what happens. He sends Nebuzradan to really do the absolute destruction of the city, and uh, he goes through the city and methodologically and systemically uh, really just destroys everything. He burns the Beit HaMikdash and he expels almost everyone in the city. That is what we mourn on Tisha B'Av. It actually says it started on the 7th of Av, but on Tisha B'Av is when the actual sanctuary got burnt. Uh, and uh, that's what's happening in Jerusalem. He takes all of the gold and silver that's built into the Beit HaMikdash from the days of Shlomo. It says there was no way to count that gold, silver, and copper. By the way, think about how many kings from Paro to previous kings came to Jerusalem and, and ransacked it and took the gold and silver. And yet, even after all that, now when Nebuzaradan is pulling off the ultimate destruction of Beit HaMikdash, there's still so much gold and silver that it cannot be counted. He takes the doors, he takes the two pillars at the entrance to the Beit HaMikdash, and they were called the Achinum Buaz. And uh, he basically takes everything he can possibly take, uh, and then he takes some of uh, the... Anyone who's seen the Arch of Titus sees how they march uh, with the menorah. This is from the Second Temple, but also it's you have a delegation that's being humiliated. That's what Nebuzaradan does. Not only does he take everything from Jerusalem, but he also takes a delegation of prominent people left and marches them to Rivla in front of Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, he basically shows that that's at the end for the Jews. He leaves inside Israel the most really n negligible, tiny group of really the poorest of the poor. And he lets some, some farmers stay. Uh, and he puts in charge of them a fellow named Gedalia. Yes, you got that right, Gedalia, from the fast of the Gedalia, and this is the story of Tzom Gedalia. And uh, Gedalia tells the people, listen guys, we're a little handful of Jews left in the land of Israel, but if we're loyal to the king of Babel, then we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be able to uh, live here and, and stay in the land. Unfortunately, a fellow named Yishmael ben Netanya, uh, who is a descendant of the house of David of the kingdom, gets jealous. Can you imagine, by the way, look at the power of jealousy. Uh, the guy is looking at the, the, what's left of his country, nothing, right? There's, there's the, the entire Jerusalem is ransacked, decimated, the king has been blinded, taken to Babylon, but he's still jealous of uh, Gedalia. He's like, wait, why is Gedalia in charge? Why am I not in charge? And the Edomites support him, and he comes to Gedalia, and he uh, really uh, uh, kills him and everyone that's in the city of Mitzpah. And uh, he, uh, he, he kills him and he runs away. Now everyone realizes that once Gedalia, who is the surrogate of the king of Babel, is gone, that's the end for everybody. And indeed, they run away to, the, uh, to, the, to Egypt, uh, even though the prophet, that's an, an, I believe the book of Yirmiyahu, 
He warns them not to. There's more detail about the story over there. But uh, basically, there's no one left, uh, and they all go to Egypt. Now, the book ends on a somewhat positive note, and that is that King Yehoyachin, who was expelled in Galut HaCharash Masgir with all the prominent people a few years before this, uh, is in Babylon. The king takes him out of prison and gives him a somewhat prominent seat at his house. He feeds him every day. And the reason for that is because the Jews are becoming a diasporic community. There's a lot of uh, Israeli Babylonians, so to speak, and uh, he, he, King Yoyachin is treated nicely till the end of his days, and that's an indication that the Jews settle down in ba Babylon and they are accepted there. And that is the end of the book of Melachim. Shout out to you for being able to finish all 25 chapters. Chizkuvim tzu and Be'ezrat Hashem. I will be continuing in the book of Yehoshua. Thank you.